So which are the best plugins for PFSense? It's a question that comes up quite a bit in the comments and people asking if it's changed since I did the video about oh, over five years ago. But here in 2024, it's not changed much, but I do have a lot of links you'll find down below for each of the plugins I mentioned and further tutorials on them to keep this video a little bit more concise. But I want to talk about the use cases I have for the ones that I use, and then you can decide for yourself if they're ones you will find useful as well. So let's get started. Now I'm running this on PFSense plus 24.03, but all these packages will work the same on PFSense CE. So it doesn't matter which version you're using, all these packages are free. We're gonna go to system and then we head to the package manager. It will default to the tab where you have the list of installed packages. If any of them need updating, they show in yellow and you can simply click this little icon here and it will reinstall or update that particular package. You may have a reason you wanna reinstall it and clicking this will actually run through the reinstall if you need to as well. The available packages right here, you have a search so you can find the exact one you might be looking for. And then you simply click the install and it will install that package. All the settings for the packages are all saved right into the config.xml. Even if you remove and reinstall those packages, unless you check the box to delete the settings, the package settings will remain even if you remove the package. Now, the first package I really think is the most important one right here, and that's the patching package. I think this is a really great upgrade that came a little while ago. You'll find a video linked down below to how it works, but simply put, whenever there's an update to it, it lets you apply or revert patches. This is how PFSense handles the longer times before there's a new version of PFSense, but still maintains security. For example, for something like CVE 2024-6387. So all you have to do is apply this. We can even revert it if there was some reason you did not want this one. And there is the ability to add custom patches where you can actually put in the commit ID and apply custom patches to this. This is a really great patch system. It's really simple to use. By default, you would just probably want to apply all or revert all is the option down here as well. But apply all as they come in. Some may require a service to restart rarely, but sometimes it may require that the entire firewall restart. Kind of depends on what exactly needs to be patched. The next package is ARPWatch. I really like this. I've done a whole video. You'll find a link down below. This lets me know on specific interfaces, specifically the one I care about here is LTS Tom. That interface, anytime a new device is added or something changes with a MAC address, that is a reason of suspicion to me. So I have it let me know and send me an immediate email upon discovery of that device. This is a good way to know, especially if you have something like a lockdown or management network and it should not be changing. This is not something you want on a network that changes a lot. This will notify you of that that change immediately and allow you to investigate to figure out why something new or a MAC address change was made on a particular network. Now, while I do have Snort installed, this is not exactly a package I recommend. And I know a lot of people, if I didn't mention it, would ask about it, Snort or Sericata, either one, and for the same reason, the problem comes with the alerts. There's a lot of management needed. So from a business standpoint, this is not what we install on clients because, well, it's not easy to manage or manage at scale. From a home user standpoint, I don't think the efficacy of these intrusion detection systems is quite that good. It's mostly a whole lot of false positives, and that's what these are right here. Matter of fact, if we look at another interface, you'll see even more false positives, but you can watch my video to understand what it can and cannot see, you'll find a whole video to Snort and one to Sericata linked down below. Now, the next plugin is PF Blocker. This is not something we turn on DNS for, though. And the reason why is I kind of find it to be a lot more troublesome here in 2024, trying to sinkhole lots of DNS, browsers going and around the DNS, or even if you have a business system where Active Directory is the DNS, it becomes a little bit more difficult to manage. But what's still important are the feeds that go to IP and reputation blocking. I have a whole video about this. This is firewall level IP blocking based on abuse feeds, CNS, army threads, and emerging threats. That video covers how you set up the IP blocking with PF Blocker. And that is a great plugin and a great way to use it because generally I don't have any false positives. These feeds are pretty well maintained and will give you some level of protection. It's not 100% because of course it's always a cat and mouse game of finding the IPs, but the IPs that are found that go on these lists are because they were doing some type of attack. 
Now, while PFSense does have built-in traffic monitoring, and that is really helpful, it doesn't give you the totals for hourly, daily, monthly, etc. for different networks. Not only does this plugin let you do the traffic totals, has a nice display so you can see things. Maybe you want to understand just how much data is going across the VPN. It also has the ability to see the numbers here or even under advanced here, you can export them as a CSV. Maybe you have to do some type of bandwidth tracking over time and maybe you need some monthly data based on that. Well, exporting a CSV and looking at all the months summarized here, you can get a better idea of your traffic and rate your own reports on this. I think this is a really handy one when you have to do a little bit of bandwidth tracking. Now, Nmap is not something that I install by default on all systems, but I think it's really handy to have Nmap. And when you're remoted into a PF Sense and you're trying to discover something on a network, maybe someone plugged your printer in, you're not seeing the IP right away, and you want to know what else might be on that network, being able to put in a IP host name or range and being able to quickly scan it, download the results, having Nmap, and especially Nmap being at a point in the network that can see across all the other subnets that may be created on this particular PF Sense to get the report, be able to download the results and start finding those weird things that you find on a network. And of course, if you want to use it on your own network, a service to have there as well. NTOP NG, definitely not a tool that we install by default, but sometimes when you're having to sort out some network issues, try to figure out bandwidth, you may have established with traffic totals that there's a lot of bandwidth, but you want to drill down further to figure out where that bandwidth is going. This is where NTOP NG is very handy for that. You can even do things like sorting it by the throughput, sort it by the total bytes and start drilling down into what's connecting and where it's connecting to. You'll find a whole video on that linked down below. Now, while that sums up the packages we use or use on an as needed basis, a few others worth mentioning. HA proxy, if you're going to run with the Acme system and the whole video tutorial I did on that for having a reverse proxy, hey, that is a really good one. It's not something we really deploy to clients commercially, but it's certainly something for if you need a reverse proxy, hey, it's nice to have all that in there along with certificate management tied together. You'll find a whole tutorial on that in my playlist. The other ones, of course, are going to be WireGuard as needed. If you like WireGuard, hey, it's a package you can load, tail scale, and of course, OpenVPN client export makes exporting your OpenVPN configs really easy. It'll even build the Windows executable installer so you can install it on a Windows system. Now, a few I did not mention. One of them is Zabbix. Yes, I've used it in the past, but I don't really use that anymore, but that is a package that's still available and one you shouldn't be using anymore because it's essentially been deprecated is going to be the ones related to Squid Proxy. I'm not big on Squid Proxy. I never was. Doing the traffic inspection was never great. Great. And with the problems that were found over the last couple of years in Squid and not really anyone putting a solution together for them, it's not a secure thing to be doing here in 2024 anymore. So if you are using it, I would look at working your way off of that as a package. Now, did I miss any of them or did I miss the one you use? Let me know in the comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content from my channel. Head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com to have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Thanks.